late January 2024 marked a significant shift in the fate of Australia's MRH-90 Taipan helicopters. In a move that took many by surprise, reports surfaced revealing that Australia had begun the process of scrapping its decommissioned fleet of MRH-90 Taipan multi-role helicopters. This news coincided with the revelation that Airbus, the aerospace giant, was keen on acquiring parts from the helicopters, fueling speculation about their future use. What followed was a curious combination of geopolitical maneuvering, maintenance issues, and business opportunities, all intertwined in a complex narrative. One of the most striking aspects of this story is the parallel development of a scandal, Australia's refusal to transfer the MRH-90 Taipans to Ukraine. Despite a publicly voiced request from Kiev, Australia cited various pretexts to withhold the helicopters, raising eyebrows on the international stage. The refusal was particularly noteworthy given Ukraine's dire need for military equipment amid ongoing conflict, and it sparked a wider debate about military support during times of war. Fast forward six months, and this seemingly isolated incident has evolved into a broader story with economic and strategic implications. According to reports from Jane's in September 2024, NH Industries, the manufacturer of the NH-90 helicopter, received 300 out of the 4,000 MRH-90 Taipan components purchased from the Australian government. These deliveries are part of a broader strategy to support the ongoing maintenance and part supply for NH-90 operators globally. This seemingly mundane detail sheds light on a much deeper issue, one that intertwines international military procurement with the logistical challenges of maintaining aging fleets of helicopters. The MRH-90 Taipan, a variant of the NH-90 helicopter, represents a localized version designed to meet the specific needs of the Australian military. The two helicopters share many components, and as such, the MRH-90 Taipan can be viewed as an essential source of spare parts for NH-90 operators around the world. According to Jane's, the MRH-90 contains thousands of components, many of which are critical for supporting other NH-90 helicopters in service across multiple continents. Key parts from the MRH-90 Taipan are already being repurposed to support the broader NH-90 fleet with NH Industries CEO Axel Alacho confirming that these components are being integrated into the wider support program for NH-90 operators. This repurposing of parts from the Australian fleet brings us to a crucial point. The MRH-90 Taipan's decommissioning was largely driven by maintenance challenges. In fact, Australia had to temporarily withdraw some of its MRH-90 Taipans from service due to a shortage of components for maintenance. This situation echoed the earlier experience of Sweden and Norway, both of which decided against acquiring the baseline NH-90 due to similar maintenance-related issues. These persistent problems have contributed to the NH-90's reputation as a problematic helicopter in the international market. What makes this situation particularly intriguing is the apparent disconnect between Australia's reluctance to send the MRH-90 Taipans to Ukraine and the ongoing acquisition of parts by NH Industries. Speculation has arisen, suggesting that a prior agreement between Australia and NH Industries regarding the supply of spare parts may have been the real reason behind the refusal to transfer the helicopters. If true, this would highlight the complex geopolitical and commercial factors at play when countries make decisions about military aid. In the wake of this controversy, a shift in demand for the MRH-90 Taipan has become apparent. Countries, especially in the Middle East, have expressed a growing interest in acquiring these helicopters. Within the next 18 months, 100 units of the MRH-90 are expected to be lined up for production signaling that the helicopter may still find a strong market. This development underscores a key point. While Australia may have seen the MRH-90 Taipan as an obsolete asset, other nations are eager to capitalize on its potential. In retrospect, one of the most compelling questions that emerges from this entire saga is whether Australia missed an opportunity to foster a long-term relationship with Ukraine by supplying them with the MRH-90. 
90 Taipans. Despite the logistical challenges posed by the maintenance issues surrounding the NH-90 series, transferring the helicopters to Ukraine could have served multiple purposes. It would have not only helped the Ukrainian armed forces in their ongoing defense efforts, but also solidified Australia's position as a key supplier of military equipment to a country with significant future defense needs. By offering the MRH-90 Taipans to Ukraine, Australia could have built a customer relationship that might have led to further orders in the future, opening up avenues for continued cooperation and military collaboration. This is particularly relevant in the context of the growing international demand for the NH-90 series, as evidenced by the recent interest from Middle Eastern countries. Had Australia moved swiftly and strategically, it might have been able to position itself as a key player in Ukraine's post-war rebuilding efforts, supplying both hardware and expertise. The MRH-90 Taipan story, while initially viewed as an isolated case of helicopter decommissioning, has grown into a multifaceted narrative. It reflects the complexities of international military procurement, the economic realities of maintaining aging military assets, and the geopolitical maneuvers that shape global defense strategies. While the decision to withhold the helicopters from Ukraine may have seemed pragmatic at the time, it now appears to be a missed opportunity one that could have led to both long-term strategic advantages and deeper ties with Ukraine. As the MRH-90 parts continue to find their way into the global market, the helicopter's legacy remains in flux. Whether it will be remembered as a problematic asset or a valuable source of parts for future NH-90 operators depends on the choices made by the countries and corporations involved in its life cycle. One thing is clear. The MRH-90 Taipan may no longer be a frontline asset, but it is far from irrelevant in the ever-evolving world of military aviation.